Martin and welcome to another great edition of MP Astro and welcome to another great video on this telescope series I've been putting out and uh, like you saw in the last video if you've not seen that video I actually have converted this telescope the Skyhawk 114 millimeter Newtonian into an astrograph. I could actually nickname it as the Skywatcher 114 millimeter PDS because where I see it, if you bought the PDS series of the telescopes, you'll find that some of the Skywatcher Newtonians, the imaging ones, the PDS series, are actually shortened uh, tubes with low profile focuses. So, in theory, this is a PDS in a way. So, but the thing is, I can't wait to start imaging uh, some fantastic you know, deep sky objects with it because this is going to be mind blowing. All right? The limited aperture, do not, do not let that bother you. Right? When you're aware of an astrograph, when you're collecting timed exposures, you're, right, you're going to get a ton of detail with a timed exposure. As long as the mount is tracking and you're getting a timed exposure, those deep sky images are just going to be out of this world, right? Literally. So I, I was searching online and I found this item. And I thought, what a perfect opportunity to do this modification. And again, it's a simple mod to do. I found this item in First Light Optics. Again, please check out the website below. Uh, I found uh, the material called flocking. Now, flocking is a process that you can do a modification to any telescope, no matter if it's a refractor, reflector, schmidt cassegrain or Maxitov. All right, any of those telescopes, you can do this uh, method of flocking. Now flocking is basically, it's just a material that you put inside into a tube. And what this flocking does is, is a non-reflective material. Now there are other methods as well, you can paint a, a non-reflective paint as well. But I found that that can be a bit messy. But also, um, there's only one manufacturer that actually does specialised paint for uh, tubes. Now the Skywatcher all, already have a darkened tube as it is but believe it or not there is actually if you put it in strong light there is a lot of shine that's reflected into that tube and what that shine is doing it's going to give out straight light in your images or your viewing so you'll start to see some weird ghosting or artifacts in the images or you start to see something in the corner of your eye that's not quite right also, it seems like if you look at something, it seems like as if it's washed out and the background might appear not as dark as it should be. So, this material that I found, it, it, it comes in sheets, right, and it, it, it's, again, you check out the website, the links are in the description below, and you can put this sheeting inside. And this sheeting will stop all of that reflection. And I thought, what a great opportunity to do a, after doing the super tune on this reflector, is to also do the flocking. Now, point to make out, if you've got telescopes that have got internal baff bafflings, which are like little inside rings inside a tube, all right, you don't really need to do flocking modification. Because those baffles inside will eliminate a lot of the stray light anyway. So if you've got a Newtonian with baffles or a refractory baffles, just don't bother with the flocking. It's only for Newtonian telescopes or refractors or any optical devices that do, doesn't have the baffles. So basically it's got to be a straight, straight tube with no baffles inside. So if you've got a straight tube, then do the flocking, it's worth it. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the process of installing this flocking. And uh, I'll do uh, my method, how I install it. Again, there may be a few people have done flocking before. 
and may not like my approach, but this is my approach, how I install uh, the flocking. If you're interested in doing flocking, again, please hit a like, please share, please subscribe, and also hit the notifications bell, because there will be a lot more of my space adventures with this telescope. So by hitting that bell, you won't miss out any other videos that I push out. And believe me, I can't wait because it, it's just going to get better and better as I go along. Alright, so if you want to follow me through my astro adventures, through bu budget astronomy, please highly recommend hit the bell and, we'll, and I'll take you through uh, my journey into astronomy. So, if you're interested in doing this uh, modification, flocking, and you want to learn more, please, let's crack on with this good work and let's do this. So, and I'm going to show you how bad that internal reflection on a telescope that's not flopped. And as you can see here, can you see the, the internal reflection on that tube? Now don't forget that mirror, okay, is reflecting the light, but you get this stray light. I know this tube is actually painted in a matte black and as you can see there you've got that shine and that shine potentially can actually uh, will cause internal uh, artifacts and, and weird things forming on your images so also with that internal reflection you'll start to lose contrast so even when you're deep sky imaging or you're observing you can actually lose contrast on the objects you want to view. So this is the reason why we're doing this flocking. So I thought I'd just point this out and you can see, look at the shine there. It, even though it's matte black, it still reflects some light and that's what you don't want. So I'm gonna show you the flocking material. I ordered this from First Light Optics and it's just simply one meter roll and 45 centimeters in length at seven pound fifty which is a good price they also do a five meter roll with the size with the, with the same 45 centimeter uh, width uh, but you get five meter roll and that usually costs about 34 pounds and this will help the contrast this is the proper stuff so i highly recommend that you check the website below all right it's in the description and order this today but this is the proper stuff don't get confused with like felt or foam lining and stuff like that this is the proper flocking material that which, will, which will give you the the dark uh, non-reflective coating inside your telescope tube okay now there is an alternative you can buy the matte black stuff uh, a matte black uh, paint which is a non-reflective paint but that usually is a bit more expensive and only a few specialized telescope shops will sell that as well but you can paint the inside the tube uh, to do this job you don't need a lot of stuff okay you just need some uh, a few equipment to enable you to install the flocking again using measuring devices like this right angle will give you uh, the, the actual length you needed you can use a tape measure to do the job and you'll need cutting materials so a standing knife or a normal knife or you know acquired scissors will be needed to cut the material and also you can use any marker pen or pencil or anything to mark uh, your position all right but that's all the tools you need all right there's not really a great deal you need to do this job all right just a little tip to let you know now this flocking, because it's got a very nice fabric feel to it, the only trouble is about this, is it is a dust magnet or a lint magnet. And occasionally you will probably have to clean the inside of your optical tube and uh, it does get in the way. So, top tip, get yourself some tape, okay, wrap it around your hand. And as you feed your hand inside the tube, you just 
gently pat all the way around, okay, to get rid of all the lint. Now it will be a bit difficult in a smaller tube, so for the 114 you might have to take all the optics out to do this. But all it is, just dab it and all the dust and the lint will come off right, and cleans it. Right? Uh, you can use a brush, one of them clothes brush, but however I find them very abrasive. So a quick dab on that, okay, will get rid of some of the lint. And as you can see there, we've just cleaned it all up just by using a bit of sellotape. So I thought I'd just show I thought I'd just show you that, okay? It's a very easy trick, all right? So that is one thing I need to highlight. So remember that top tip. So we've got the tube itself. Now I'm not gonna go into detail on stripping the telescope completely. Again, please refer to the last video guys based on Super tune in the OTA for the Skywatcher 114 and because it's been converted to the PDS, all right. This is an ideal opportunity. If you refer to those video guys, I take you through how to strip this out. So basically, I've stripped the whole entire tube out, okay. Uh, you'll notice there's a mark in there. I've already marked out where my primary mirror position was. So basically, I taped across the, the primary mirror and the edge of the tube and that will mark out my position of where I need to install the primary mirror. Now as you see I stripped it down to the bare bones all right literally nothing's in there just the tube okay so what I'm doing now is before I install the flock I do opportunity is just wipe it down with a, a clean cloth all right just to get rid of dust particles and if your tube is quite dirty, all right, uh, use some kind of degreaser agent or cleaning product. Uh, I use isopropyl alcohol, which is very good, all right. And I just cleaned it out, just put a little bit in there and just wiped it dry. Basically, you want this surface to be absolutely uh, spotless, okay, and free from dust. So you want this reasonably clean so that when you apply the flocking into the tube all right you're going to get a decent adhesive bond okay the, the better the surface all right you don't need to file this down you don't need to remove any of the coating in the sides all right you do not need to strip it down to the uh, bare metal all right you just want this just clean all right and that's what I've just done there so if you want a decent uh, bond between the material and the tube and to have a long longer life so that you don't need to strip it all out again flocking can be a one-off thing right as soon as you install it that's it for it for for a long long time you will never need to uh, do any replacement so strip it down to its bare bones all right that's all you need to do that on this telescope that the primary mirror and the secondary mirror they both have an indentation is the lip here so where that lip is there that's exactly 15 millimeters in with that recessed so I worked it out 15 millimeters or 1.5 centimeters for both ends so what I'm trying to say is what I'm trying to suggest is is I do I don't want to flop the entire tube and the reasons for that is because of these are mated onto the tube very accurately I don't want the flocking to go in between uh, the tube so that if I try to install these it's going to affect the collimation so I want these these two both parts to be not with the flocking inside so when I measure it, always luckily I've already did the mod and I've always got the markings from the, the primary mirror. I'm looking at, when I'm measuring the tube itself, I'm looking at 31.5 centimetres. So 
that's where I'm going to cut to that part there. All right, so that's how deep. So as I'm measuring it, yeah, it's definitely 31.5 centimeters. So 31.5 centimeters is the, is going to be the the length of the flocking, and they're going to make it in two halves. You, it's up to you if you want to cut, do it in strips and do a bit at a time. But personally, I'm going to do two whole halves if I can. All right, and the reasons for that is it's better to have one whole part. But again, it just depends on the diameter of your mirror. You might have to do it in segments. But there's nothing wrong with doing it in segments. It's not to worry. So what I do is I'm going to cut the material to 31.5. And I'm going to measure how much of my material I need to do the two halves. So this is the flock in itself, and as you see, it's it's a very nice, very dark, non-reflective coating. And that's the thing with this stuff is if you fold it out, you also get to cut it exactly straight. And there's little grid squares for you to cut them straight. So that's why I do like, all right? Very nice little feature that of this um, flocky stuff. So I'm gonna cut the xyl of length. So I've cut it down and I'm measuring it at, so the length I've cut it is at 33. So I've cut it at 33. The total length of here and I'm just going to cut this in half okay and the length uh, the in half is usually 22.5 centimeters in width but uh, the tube will be two halves so when I place the first half I roll it all the way in once that's in place then I roll the second part into the tube so I'm now going to cut this into, into size, All right, like so, All right, and just using a good pair of uh, scissors or even a knife, All right, you can cut this material out. So we'll have two halves and we're going to install it into the tube. So this is it, time for the flocking piece. So I've got one piece, at the moment you can't see there, but what I've done, if you see at the back, I have peeled off one little piece on here. There's like, you can see, I've exposed a bit of the tape here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this part on along with this, this seam here. So I'm going to line it up first, along the seam. Again, using the mouse as your support, you can do that, okay? And what we're going to do is just going to line it up like so, carefully, and we're going to feed the first piece in, like so, all the way in, and we're going to line it up to along the seam. Now the seam is the guide. I'm going to line it flush ok, just line it up ok what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed it across and I'm going to peel back the adhesive bit by bit I mean literally bit by bit so I'm just peeling it back carefully okay just feed it in best you can so same here same detail just peeling it back Okay, and I'm just rubbing it in. 
Okay, so I'm just, as I'm peeling it across, I'm just rubbing it across like so. Okay, it takes a bit of time. Just keep rubbing it. What I'm trying to do is try and get all the, the air particles out. So um, as I'm peeling it back, all right, I'm getting there. All right, and I keep peeling it. And as I'm peeling a bit of the, the adhesive back packaging, I'm rubbing it in carefully. Takes some doing, but what I'm doing is I'm trying to get all the air bubbles out. It's looking good already. Again, back and forth, forth, back, forth, back. Again, again, keeping it back. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, see now. We've got the first piece in. As you can see there, we've got a nice, I've got a few kinks at the bottom, but I can straighten that out. But as you can see, we've got a nice cover there. And you can tell straight away the difference already. All right, there's the untreated bit, there's the treated bit. And you can see how dark that is compared to this side. So that's a very good example. So. Again, what I've done, I've fed it all the way around, I've got no air bubbles. If you do get air bubbles, you have to use a knife just to punch them out and then press it all out. But at the moment, it's one good piece like that. So, same detail, we've got the second piece and we've done it exactly the same. Peel off the first piece like that, the, the adhesive cover, okay? And you should have a black strip like that. And then what we're going to do is we start off on the second seam, all right, and we're going to work our way that way. So again, when we put, put the first piece, we measure up what we need in the inside of this second piece, okay? So what I do is I feed it through the optical tube. So. Again, patience, don't rush. Feed it in, like so. And you're just gonna line it up to go against the seam first. So line it up the seam first. Okay. Get that first part in. If you're not quite in there, just peel back and then realign. Okay, but you've got to get that first part in there so it's nice and level. So, very crucial to get this right. Okay, so we're on the first part there. So line it up another piece. So again, feed it like so and then peel back some more. Again, peel back some more. Again, just slowly what I'm trying to do is get as much air out of there. So I'll keep peeling back, so again, same detail. And I keep going. And I keep pulling that back. Doing now, just 
slowly getting on there. Right, let's work it way all the way in. Just get rid of as much of the crease as you can. Okay, we've job done. So the next bit, after you've flocked the inside, you just got to uh, remove some of the holes. All right, so carefully, using a knife, or muddling knife, which is better, you just quickly just prise up, uh, cut all the way around, like so. Just cut in the uh, all the outside parts, including the holes as well. Okay, if you haven't got a knife that can go through them, you can use a drill bit and just carefully cut around that. So, basically, I'm going to cut through uh, the focuser uh, draw tube hole again. Use it's got to be a really sharp knife, okay. So just work your way around, all right, until you cut all the way through. So now the tube's complete. We're now going to assemble all the optics in there and collimate them. Um, again, please refer to the other video guides, all right, and check out the link at the top. All right, I highlight how to assemble this together and. Uh, so let's take a look at the flocking and as you can see wow look at that the whole tube is darkened all I can see is the reflection of the primary mirror and the tube is very dark and uh, yeah what an awesome upgrade that is really it really is definitely worth the money seven pound £7.50 for this is not bad and takes about half an hour to do if you take your time maybe take you a bit longer and uh, that is now the flocking complete now for you guys wondering what have I done to the focuser well, the part finally arrived so I'm using a nylon uh, lock screw alright all it is is an M all it is is an M4 thread that I've tapped onto the base and I can just lock in the focuser that way. Also, if you look here, I've made I've made a O-ring. So I've cut the O-ring in one place. So I then wrapped it round to fill the gap because there was light escaping from the focuser. So it's been glued around the actual holder, not the focuser, and. Uh, as you can see there, this o-ring stays put onto the focuser. So now that will block a lot of the light from either entering into the main tube. So I've done a few I've done a few modifications on there and it look the yeah, focuser is looking damn sight better. So uh the O-ring will stop the stray light and this now will lock me a 
focuser. So I've kept the original focuser and it now performs as it should. And you can see here, if you look close along the uh, actual flocking itself, I've got no air bubbles or anything trapped in there. So I've done a really good job there, really good job. All right. Um, something I might consider is that the focuser draw tube is silver. I might spray that matte black to reduce some more internal reflections. But so far, that is a job. That is a job well done. Really is, and that telescope will now perform like a superb PDS telescope. So I can't wait for some clear skies. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get to test the performance of this fantastic, compact, lightweight Newtonian PDS. So, I've got the camera connected up, and this is with the flocking, okay? And as we check the camera, you can tell straight away that the image is very contrasty. So it's basically highlighted some of the dark areas, much more defined. And it does actually appear a little bit sharper as well. Maybe my collimation is much better. But it's definitely, um, it has improved the image quality quite a bit. Yeah, that's that's quite impressive. Yeah, that's quite impressive stuff. So that image quality is absolutely outstanding. So it just shows you what flocking can actually do to your performance of your telescope. So helps the contrast, makes uh, the faint images stand out just a tad more, and reduce the uh, the stray light. So So, flocking is done, and I must admit, I've, I've done a good job. Uh, I wouldn't say it was easy, because it's not easy, and if you've got a Newtonian or a telescope or whatever brand telescope you have, if you have a large tube, it could be a bit difficult to install. So, for me, I managed to do it in two halves, which is good, which means if I've got two halves and they overlap, it, it'll be a good fixture and uh, it's not going to peel off. Now, if you've got a large tube, you might need to do in segments. So, again, it's up to you how you want it. I know if you can get away with just putting a whole piece in a one that 
can be a bit difficult because if you put the whole piece in the water, uh, you might get a lot of problems with the, the air bubbling, uh, you're not going to get a nice finish, you know, and the, the, the actual flocking might not be a good fit. So sometimes do it in segments can also work out for the big, uh, bigger tubes for the telescopes you have. So if you've got a big tube, a telescope, do it in segments if, just to make it easier. But if you can do it in two halves like I've done, then give it a try. So if you've got a big tube, I recommend that you order uh, the, the bigger rolls to do this. Now, I don't know why at first light optics have only got it in uh, 1 meter and 5 meters and 45 centimeters in width. I could really have done it so there was, uh, the width was in different sizes as well. So that's the only point I need to make out for, uh, for first light optics. But other than that, they're the only ones that actually sell this. All right? I've not seen any astro telescope shops that actually sell this product. And I'm actually quite surprised that it's not that, you know, it's not that popular. All right? I know a lot of people have done a lot of flocking, but I've not seen many people that have done it. But the thing is, when you do flocking, your image, the image quality, the contrast will be greatly improved. And I noticed that, that is just fantastic, how the contrast is just transformed. And contrast is very important, particularly if you're looking at something very dim, you know, like a galaxy or a nebula. It darkens the background a bit, but also you'll start to he see hints of detail, tiny hints, but that little bit extra will go a long way. Providing the, when you do the flocking, you make sure that the, the telescope is collimated, and it is worth it. It's seven pound fifty to do the modification. For to me, it is definitely worth it. And the thing is, I've had no problems actually installing um, the sheeting. The sheeting is in good quality. Um, and to be honest with you, it is worth that money. Don't buy cheap alternatives like foam inserts or any felt. This stuff is very this stuff is specially designed for flocking, all right? This is not just the normal um, cheapy sort of foam stuff and all that. There is no cheap alternatives, all right? You either got to buy the proper, proper flocking material or the paint, all right? If you start buying other cheap alternatives, it just doesn't work, all right? You'll still get the shine and all that. Unless you can find paint that's, that is that matte black it doesn't reflect right there are cheap alternatives but to be honest with you I would recommend purchasing the proper stuff and to be honest with you £7.50 is not breaking the bank okay and you do with that sheet I can do another uh, 114 with the material I've got so I've got plenty of material that I can use uh, to do another telescope if I wish Right, but only a, a telescope of this size. So if you've got a bigger telescope, I do recommend to order a lot more rolls. But you've got to measure the, you've got to measure up the telescope tube, right, to determine how much you want. And all you've got to do is just to determine the, the length, right? You measure the tube, the length, and you then measure the circumference all the way around the tube. All right, so use a tape measure, measure it around what you need, okay? And that gives you the basic uh, dimensions that you need so that you know, you know what material, what to order. But for me, I just ordered the one meter, 45 centimeters, and that's more than ample for this telescope, all right? I've got enough material, I'm gonna like, even consider doing my refractors, my, my ST80, and my ST102 achromatic refractors. So I'm gonna do the flocking for that. I might even do the, uh, the Skywatcher um, Maxitop 127 as well. I might actually flock that as well because that, that is also a straight tube. But however, um, 
I don't have enough material, so I'm going to have to order a bit more material for that one. So, again, would I recommend this stuff? Definitely. I definitely give it five stars, you know, because it, it is actually quite good quality material. Very easy to install if you're careful. I mean, the price, £7.50, is a bargain. So I give it five stars, without a doubt. And again, if you're interested in doing this flocking, give it a try yourself. If you make mistakes, you make mistakes. But you, again, take your time. Everyone can do it. And believe me, you will reap up the rewards. Because your, your image quality will go a long way and you won't get any um, internal reflections and all that. So now, I can't wait to uh, wait for it till it's clear skies so I can actually test the performance of this of this Skyhawk, all right? Well, the Skyhawk PDS, I call it. So, please look forward to another video. Again, please hit a like, share, subscribe onto my channel, and also hit the bell. Hitting the notifications bell will keep you updated to the new videos coming out soon. And believe me, I've got tons of stuff, all right? I'm just keep going with this stuff, all right? So, thanks again. Thanks for watching. Remember, stay safe, everyone. And I wish you all clear skies.